Okay, so we are going to go through quickly. So I said you should all type it in your in your local machines and bring it. So we are designing a candy vending machine. Right? Very, very simple candy vending machine, right? And then we are going to look at the final state machine of the of the we are going to look at the final state machine of the vending machine. Some input output. Then I think we did the more FSM, right? So this one, we are going to look at the mainly FSM. And then we are going to see an issue with the mainly FSM. We are going to fix that issue and then basically that, that basically okay. So your candy vending machine will take two coins, ten pesos or 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 ten pound coins or whatever. So so ten and five, right? 10 quen and then 5 quen and then your candy vending machine will give you two it will give you two outputs right your candy and then your change that is if it is more than some amount right so now as i said the machine accepts only two quen 10 and 5 and then the money inside um, the machine uh, when it exceeds okay your candy one candy costs what 20 what 20 whatever 20 coins or whatever, right? 20, right? So when the money within your machine exceeds 20, it will give you, it will automatically output a candy and some change, five, like five coin change, right? Now, if you input, let's say, five, 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 and then it gets to 20, it, it will give you a candy. The, the, the candy output will be enabled, right? They give you a candy, but no change, right? If you do, let's say, 10, 5, 10, that's right, it will give you 5. So it will give you one candy and give you change. Right? Very easy. <laughs> very, very easy, right? So maybe in the exam, we just give you a question like this or a premise like this. The, the, the candy was uh, 20 pens. You can only accept uh, 10 and 20. So you have two inputs, 10 and 20 inputs. You have to put the candy and then the change output. Understood? So do, so do we understand the premise? Ah, the question is on the board. I said, go through your slides, input all the posts before you come. So I assume that you guys understand the machine So you need to brush through quickly, then you go away. Do you understand? Or go away. I said, the whole point is that one, we, are we are designing candy vending machine. That will output, or that will input a pen, and then it will give you candy, whatever, right? Candy, right? Then one candy costs 20, 20 coins or 20 whatever, right? The machine can accept only two coins, 10 and 5, right? Now the machine gives you either a candy and then change. It can give you only candy but no change, right? So it means that. If, if one can be cost 20 and then we are accepting only 10 and 5, it means that um, the money inside your machine cannot exceed 55, right? Once I input uh, 5, 5, 5 pen, 5 pen, 5 pen, 5 pen, automatically once I get to the 3 pen, it just outputs a candy, right? Once I do probably 10, 5, 10. Automatically, it gives you a candy and change. Simple. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Shall I continue? Should I continue? This is very important. You must, you must understand the statements that it has been made. And you must actually visualize how to design it in your hardware. So by now, you guys know the inputs. You guys know the outputs, right? And how to actually design the hardware. Are we all there? OK, so now here, with a system like that, so it means that I have two inputs. 
right? The 10 quen and then the 5 quen. So I just name it C for the 10 and then F for 5. Right? I have also two out cutting release and then chain release. So these are just one bit, one bit. The 10 and then the 5 and C and one bit, one bit, right? R and C, one bit, one bit. So it means that if I have a candy, it will get me, this one will get you enable. Can be enabled. If I have a change, this one will be enabled. If broken, no change, disable. So it means zero, zero. If I have a candy, it change, one, one. Understood? So now, I, I, I can just ask you, based on this diagram, just draw your state diagram. <laughs> right, so how do you draw your state diagram? You have, you, you have two types, as I said, you have the melee and the more. So I can start, I can start my, I can start, I can start my state diagram like this. These are my states, right? My states, right? And then I, I will say, let's say state zero. State zero means that um, there's no input. I've not inputted any crime. Right, so if I'm in state zero, and then, uh, so this is my state, and then I, I bring an output here. My, out, my output is, my output will be, uh, let's say, RC. One bit for R, one bit for C. Right, so if I write something like this, zero, zero, right, it means that I'm in state zero. My, my change, my change is zero, my candy is zero, right? Understood? Now, if, so this is output, wait, I get RC, I get five RC, RC, right? So if I'm in this stage and then I input, my input is a, what, TF, the 10 pen, the 5 pen, right? So if I write something like, Zero, zero, zero. What does it mean? No pen at all. Uh, zero, zero, right? So now, from this, from this state, I can go to another state by saying somebody does a, a one, zero. The input is one, zero. It means that my 10 is one, my my five is zero. Somebody, it means that somebody has inputted a, a what? A 10 pen. Understood? So I have to move to another state. Right, so this will be state, let's say 10. I name it state 10. Right? In state 10, my output is what? Still zero zero because it has not to the 20, right? Right? So today just how I begin to draw my state machine. And then if I do something like this, right? This is more machine. You've already seen that, right? Now here, you are going to use the melee side, the melee machine to, to design the state diagram. So this is how the state diagram looks like. So it's very easy. Yes, this one, you can use like 30 seconds to draw this state diagram. One, 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 you know what you are about. But yes, move from one stage, one, within 10 seconds. So, for the... For the melee machine, right? For the melee machine, what? The only difference is that your you have your states, you start from zero, and then you have your inputs on the apps. So I add like this. So you keep a half of the like zero zero, and then your outputs are also on the app. Right? Zero, zero. So these are your inputs and then these are your outputs, right? For the for the more, you saw that the outputs were inside the states. But here they are outside the state and then they are on the apps. Understood? So I continue. So here you can just go to and see how it is. Can somebody explain to me how I got on? Let, let's say let's start from the zero zero. Let's start from the Zero. What is happening there? Let's start from the last end. The last end. So now we are going to be. We are going to be. We are going to be answering questions based on. So we are starting from 
The last lesson. The first lesson. So, so what is happening in stage zero? Please. What is happening? It's zero, 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 zero. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This area, huh? So the, the, the circle is the state, so zero, then it's zero. Right, so it's a zero, what has happened? Oh, on the apps, zero, 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 and zero, zero. What does that mean? Yeah, it means, it, it means that our n, our 5 pen is 0, and our 10 pen is 0, and our output is 0, 0. Right? It means that the, nobody has inputted any pen, so our output is 0, 0. So let's go to what happens if the 10. What happens, what happens here on this one? The next one. Yeah, yeah. 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 zero. Yeah. Means that zero, like nothing. Zero. Uh -huh. Once you are drawing, you will know what. what you have to start drawing. You will know what it is. So the next lesson. Let's go to the next. This one. <laughs> what has happened? Okay. And then, what is the output? Why? Uh huh. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. No output. Why? Okay, so means that we have moved to this one. From a diagram, we have moved to another thing, right? What is the thing? Huh? So we need that the, the, the money inside is what? Five, right? Five. The next lesson, we are in the fire. What is happening here? Okay. What, what is happening here? This area, what are you, what are you, what are you? Okay. 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 So we have moved to. Next lesson. What is happening here? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What is happening there? Hurry up, hurry up. I can't hear you. Huh? I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Hurry up, hurry up. We are here, we are here. You are moved with them. Somebody. Now, we are here. What is happening here? Yeah. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay. So, we have moved to 50 because the person has given another five, right? Yeah. So, what's part of here? Genesis. Next message. Masa. <laughs> and you don't know that you are the next message. <laughs> yes. What is happening here? Please hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This is just very easy. This is just very easy. Next, 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 next. Next, next, next. We are here, we are here, we are here. The next next.
So we are this a test. Somebody has put a test. Now, what is happening to us? What is happening here? There is a test, right? Where is it said? You need that we have 10 candidates. Like 10 candidates. Somebody has this one, this one. Somebody has put it in the text. What is it? What is it? What is it? What? No, there's no The first one is, I didn't see where you are. The first one is, the candy release. The second one is, the chicken. So if somebody, if I mistake 10, somebody will put another pen. The pen is 10, right? It means that I have to the person the candy and then no change. And then we are, I move back to say zero. And then we press the whole thing. See, I look at the first one is the first one. Alright, what's up? What? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I'm taking it in a way that the states, the states just use the friend in the system. Right? So if I mean if they then I mean that I already have ten friends in the system. So now if I mistake if I have ten friends in the system and then here, yeah, this ones are the issues. The first one are the issues. These are the outputs. The input, the first, this one here is five, and this one here is ten. This one here is candy release. You that I'm giving you a candy. This one here is I'm giving you change. So I said that um, the candy was split. So automatically, if I'm intensive, somebody puts a ten, right? So automatically, what it does is it gives you a candy and no change. They remove you. It's zero. It's time for the whole body. Yeah. 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 Then this one is like this one is like ten, ten. Right now, ten is five. So then you have five. So you have ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's continue. So this is the state diagram, right? So now you are going to put you have drawn this state diagram. You have to put this state diagram. In our very log, right? I hope you all understand how I'm going to say that you're here. You all understand, right? Uh, eh? Okay, so. Yeah, so here, here is 10, so this is where you can give it as 10. So it has to go to both of them because the money inside here is 10, so it's 10, it's 20. The candy goes to this. So my love is the candy, no J, and the J. So where is that? So now the five part. Yes, 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 the five part.
five inside a certain way, right? Then I give the ten. This one means this one means a meal of the ten. Look on top of the input slash output. The input is depend on the five and ten slash the output is always can be released and change. Group it, right? Okay. Do you understand? If if you have any question, ask it before I continue. Any question? Okay, so now we go to create our code. We create our project. This I know we have all done already. Create the project. Next, next. So we are going next, 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 next. next, next. Then we select the parts, right? Very important. I showed you how to select the part already, so you, you guys have done that already. So we go to next, next, next. So we go and add, we, we go to plus, create design, create design, candy FSM, So it gives us, it gives us this, right? And then here, uh -huh, and then you can use any editor you want. So I'm using Node Plus, Node Part Plus Plus. So that's why you can see this editor here, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we start with the design of our candy FSM. Very important. Now to design anything, I have to first of all start with what is called the block diagram, right? <laughs> and then this is the block diagram of my candy final statement in my candy FSM. Right? First of all, we have a clock, and then we have reset. Reset underscore n. What does that mean? If I write reset underscore n, and then this is a variable, what does that mean? I have clock reset underscore n. I, uh, and I wrote reset underscore n for a reason. Masa. Yeah. Understood? So we put, so we have low percent. After low percent, you know that if the percent is low, or if the percent is zero, that's why it's the percent. If it's high, then it's low percent. Right? Uh -huh. Four of these are one bit, one bit, one bit, one bit. Five, ten, one bit, one bit. Can you change? One bit, one bit. So I'll, I'll come and define my so in so in your report you you will give me your lab reports, right? So if you have if I for the design you have to bring your block diagram and then your input output declaration so that I know what the, the so that I know what the signals are. So all of this are this are your outputs, these are your inputs. So your model. Understood? So now we move on. So to write the code for the candy FSM, you have to arrange your, your you have to arrange your code in a way, right? For when we are writing the code for the FSM about last week or something, when we wrote the code for the when we wrote the code for the FSM, I think last last week or something, we wrote we said that the FSM is made up of what the Next stage logic, right? You have next stage logic, right? That fits into uh, what? Who knows? State register. Uh, is it I or state register? So here is next state. Then this piece into what? Your output of your And then this goes to your what? Output, right? And this is your state or current state, right? These are your what? Inputs. Right? Your state is fed back to your what? Inputs here. And then And then here, very, here, very, very important. We are we are dealing with another kind of statement, right? 
which is the main statement. So your inputs will also refer to your what? Output. So in the exam, what is the difference between male and male machine? Right? As easy as that, right? Merely a moment. <laughs> Just take it for two marks. Simple. Right? So, this is how after I read my code in a form like this, right? So, first of all, I start with the model over there. Then, I, let, I give it my input output here. Yeah. Then, I declare my state register. Recurrent state next state. This recurrent state next state depends on, on the number of states I have. The, the wave depends on, on, the, on the number of things I have, right? Then I come and update my current, my state register here in this code here, right? If not reset, then some code comes in, there some code comes in, right? Then my next is my computational logic is here. My next state logic always has current state or, or so of course, it depends on the input and the current state. Then my, my last one is our output logic, right? The output logic also depends on the current state and it is the output of logic here. Easy as that. Do we, do we understand? No. Huh? Do we understand? Shall we continue? So this is exactly how your code will be, away, will, will be arranged. So we, yeah? Master, Master, understand this and let me continue as he has. So continue. So now your next is we are going to write the code itself. So now we start off with the input and output, right? So my name is the name of my model is Candy Epson, right? I said my inputs are what? The clock, reset, and five, then candy change. Right, so I can reply it. Inputs. Block is a one bit one bit. Inputs five ten one bit output. Now this is what I said in your code. If you are using computational logic, right, you have to use um, assign statements, and then that one we just assign a wire. We don't. If I don't say anything here, it means what? It's a wire, right? Now if I use if I'm going to use my variable, the candy and the change inside an always block, I've said, I've said this already. Inside an always block, I must declare it as red. Right? I said this, I've said this over and over again. Now, I come and declare the current state and this state. Right? For this state, current state and this state. And then I have four states, right? So I declare a constant for zero states, which is what? Just two bits. Because we have only two states. Okay. Right? We have four states, and I need only two bits of residence, right? So I declare a constant zero states and give it two bits of zero zero, right? So, so anywhere I put zero states, the code knows that, or the variable code knows that it is zero zero, right? Then states five. Five states is zero one. Ten states is one zero, and fifteen states is one one. Easy, right? This is just 0, 5, 10, 15. Are you seeing it? So you will see how I've mapped my my states. Easy, right? Next is my my current state of this. So I go um, always as positive end of the block. Because I said we sample, because we're using a flip from here, we sample at the end of the block. Right? So I write always as positive end of the block or negative end of the Reset. I'm using active mode reset. So if reset is zero, this not reset is zero. If it is zero, right? What do I do? My current state is zero. Zero is start from zero. Right? If I reset, it always goes back to the zero state. Right? Else, my next state is due to the current state. As easy as that. Shall I continue? Shall I continue? Okay, so now the important part is this one. My next state logic. Right? And it's also very, very easy. My next state logic. All I do is that I um, always ask because my next state logic depends on the inputs and then the current state. I say always at the inputs 
So we say always at the current state or the new boot, same as our 5 and 10, right? So always at the current state or 5 or 10. Right? Case, current state, like your switch statement you see. So case, current state. So now if my current state is zero, this is what I mean. In case my current state is zero, what happens? And then if case 5 and 10, I actually I actually combine 5 and 10 in two years. Right, so 5 is here, 10 is here, just like this one. Just here, 5 and 10. Right? Are you seeing it? Yes, I'm seeing it. So, I need to see it. I said case 5 comma 10. It means that I've grouped the 5 and 10 into two bits. The first, the MSB, into two bits. The MSB is what? The 5. And then the LSB is 10. Right? So, two bits. So, so anytime I must, I must give you some stupid value. So, if you start right there, and I'm starting from uh, zero states, right? So, if you get something like two bits, one zero, it means that uh, five and then to ten is zero, right? Right? So, my next stage is what? Five states. I mean, zero states. Right? I'll give it to my best one is what? Uh, five. So I'll, I'll give it five. I'll give it a five pair. What happened? My next thing is what? Five states. That's the diagram. So I'm just, I'm just using the diagram to post my next thing. And I assume very, very easy. So now, yes, in the same zero state, in the same zero state, if I give it a 10 pair, so it means that here, Zero here is one. Means that somebody has given me a ten. Pen. My next stage is what? Ten. So my next stage is ten stage here. Default zero stage. Understood? You see how easy it is. So you must just use your stage diagram to code. Where are you? So use your stage diagram directly to code. So my next one is, I move to uh, five states, right? In case five states, if, again, case five and ten, one, zero. So you know, if somebody, I'm in case five states, somebody is in five, I move to case ten states, ten states. If somebody is in ten, I move to what? Six states. Then I go to the next one. Which is case 10 states, then I move on and on and on. Then I move on to 15 states, right? And then I'm done. So the 15 states is the last state, right? Right? Yeah. So, any question on the state? So, it's like on the next state logic, any question? Not the number of inputs. Not the inputs, but the statement. Keep quiet, keep quiet. Can we have five ten What? Find the of five from from our we define that we specifically define that the magic and the quality change. So the five and ten is zero. Yes. I mean, the is where the building machine is taking the So that would be another building machine. A completely different building machine. No, no, no. Hmm? Uh -huh. From your state diagram, you are given a question, right? You you will draw your state diagram. So once you are going through your state diagram, you you will know the number of states. Because you are moving from one state to another. They, they are giving you this is the 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 we have to employ two inputs. Five and ten, one and zero. So other one is one, the other is zero. So you move, you always move from this state to this state. So in drawing your state diagram, that's why after you draw your state diagram, you know that oh, 
have this number of states. Look, you can never know your number of states ahead of time, no. You must draw your state diagram to know the, the, to know the number of states. Understood? Understood? Huh? Pardon? Yeah. What can cause? Yeah. How do we get? Yeah, hey, I get you, but everything is wrong. Everything is from the state diagram. The state diagram gives us the state. So this is state 0, state 5, state 10, state 15. So I said, if you are in state, let's say if you are in state 5, your your brain inside your system is 5. If somebody gives the 10, if somebody gives the 10, then I move to the 15 because I guess I have, let's say, 5 plus 10. So I move to the so that's how we do this. No, no, no. They can be, they can be experienced. So if I do this, by somebody gives me the test, I always have 15 in the system. They can be experienced, so it's everything. Right? So now when I make the 15, and then somebody gives me the 5, that's when I move to the 0, then I give the best of the family. If I make the 15, if somebody gives me the 10, I move to the 0, I give you candy and taste. Shall I continue? Okay, so this is this is all the next stage logic, right? So once you do that, we are, so we are, so we are just using your state diagram you drew to code directly. It is just easy. Once you are able to draw your state diagram, then the rest, is, the rest is easy. <laughs> and yeah, 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 the same thing. Okay, so. My next is how to get my output logic, right? The same to my, you see that my, my output logics are the ones that, the slash, the difference are my output logic, right? After the slash, it's my output logic. Right? So now, I'm going to calculate my output logic. My output logic, I guess on the axis. These are my inputs, and they're my output logic. But for the main machine, my output also depends on this is quiet. My output also depends, my output logic depends on my states and then the inputs. Right? So if I start from here, I guess I start from the zero. The same way, always a current state of 5 or 10. Because the output logic depends on the current state and then the, the inputs. Right? I go to case, case current state. I start from zero. Right? In case zero, if the input is five. If the, if the input is five, my output is I guess two billions. If the input is five, so I combine the candy and then the chip is two ways. Candy chip. The 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 MSB is candy. The LSB is chip. Right? So two bits. Candy chip. So I give it two bits of zero zero. If that is if somebody I guess a five, right? Two bits zero zero. The same. I mean the zero. Somebody can testify. My output is what zero zero here. So I'm just using the state diagram I do in this school. So we can get one wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we must be very good. So, so, so the next, let's say the same thing. I mean, say zero. Somebody gives the ten. My, my, how can we get the change? It's still zero, zero, right? And I move to the next stage. Five. So you do the next stage. Ten. You do the next stage. Six. That's easy. It just. Like, yes, of course. It depends on how you put that in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. 
So I'm continuing. So I move to stage five. Do all of that for stage. Do uh, calculate my output for the stage five. Move to stage ten. Move to stage fifty. So you can see that in stage fifty is the only time. I in stage fifteen is the only time or yeah, in the time I get the candidate cheese. That is if somebody input a ten years, then the candidate cheese is one one. As you can see, one one. As easy as that, right? So that is all for the code. So all this, so I finished with my with my FSM. So this is like this one can take like like three minutes. Yeah. Right? Should we continue? Okay. So our our next is we run the simulation. So you guys have your you guys have done this already. So just run the simulation and let's see the results. Oh, okay, but first of all, you must design your... You must design a test bench, right? To test to see whether your two machine is working. Right, so for me, that's what I did. For my test bench, I'm, I'm going to input... Uh, so, I have my 10 and 5 So, for the test bench, I can only input it by 5 and 10. Those are the inputs I have access to. Or the, the inputs I, I can give my state machine, right? A five and ten. So I go through all that steps to create um, my test bench. So now for the test bench, as I said again, the test bench has the test bench has inputs and outputs, right? So I said that uh, in the test bench for the last time I said that uh, in the test bench your input becomes rex. And then your outputs become white, right? In the test bench. I said that in the last class, right? Right? So I have the 12 preset, uh, 5 10. Then why I can be uh, changed. So then I call my FSM. I name it can be FSM, right? Then I give it a name. Then I call the clock, the clock, the clock, the clock, the clock, the clock. Right? Now, here. This is the collection of those who see in the code before. Here, yeah, the clock. Because, listen carefully, because I have a clock, I have to. And, and I know that the clock changes from 1 to 0, 1 to 0, 1 to 0, right? So I'll, I have to write a code that will depict the clock for me, right? So my clock changes from 1 to 0, 1 to 0. This is how your clock look, looks like. Right? So I have to write code to depict this or to generate this stuff for me. Then how do I do that? After first of all, I first of all start with the clock period. Right? And then the clock period is getting from um, from the frequency. From the frequency, right? F, F, right? Now, I think I said that your board, the board we are using here, right, has a frequency of what? Anybody who can remember? Okay. The clock, the board I'm using, I think I, I said it before. The board I'm using here has a clock, has a clock here. <laughs> so the clock has a, a frequency of what? So now I have to depict that or design a code that will give me that 50 MHz. Right? The 50 MHz just means that what is my clock period? So I should write it there, right? Now, as I said, we are doing calculations in nanoseconds. So I have to convert everything I do to nanoseconds. So if my frequency is 50 megahertz, what is my period? T is equal to 1 over x. 1 over 6 megahertz. In nanoseconds, what is it? Anybody? This is just math. So so, 
You guys are not doing any, <laughs> any calculations at all. Convert it to nanoseconds. We are working in nanoseconds. So if I give, if I'm giving a frequency, right, and I'm asked to calculate the period, I have to always put it in nanoseconds. Very important. What? what? So if I have a frequency of 50 megahertz, what is the period in nanoseconds? What's up? This is just seconds though. In nanoseconds. Not seconds, nanoseconds. Ah, no seconds, but I'm not going to write anything down there. <laughs> this is a waste of time, but okay, okay. In seconds is what? In seconds. Huh? <laughs> One over F. One over the time of the engine power. Six, six, nine, Seconds, right? So nanoseconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So twenty point zero nanoseconds. You see how this is just basic square. What is just okay? Whatever. So. So, so uh, once I'm giving, so I've seen how to convert. Please keep quiet. You have seen how to convert nanosecond, uh, megahertz to nanoseconds, right? So when the nanoseconds here, the nanoseconds is a period, right? Is a period. Is a period here. So what? What do I do? In my code, I can do this in about 10 ways, right? To actually generate a clock like this. I can do this in like 10 ways. I first of all, start with my clock is equal to zero. Please keep quiet. I start with my clock is equal to zero, right? Then uh, we have a statement in very long code called forever. 
right? And then this code, any, anything after that, forever, runs forever, right? So first of all, I will declare my clock period. Up a clock period of what? The clock period is equal to what? 20 nanoseconds. Right? Clock period, 20 nanoseconds, right? So, because I have a clock period of 20 nanoseconds, half the clock period is what? 10 nanoseconds. Right? So, I just come and write forever has, then just means has a clock period divided by 2. Right? This just is a number. Clock period divided by 2 is what? 10 nanoseconds, right? So, so forever has, or in time, 10 nanoseconds, my clock is equal to a toggle of the clock, not of the clock. Right? So, a toggle, like, not of the clock. So, it means that I'm toggling my clock. Right? Anytime, so, it starts from here. So, I start from clock is zero. I start from, I start from clock is equal to zero. I start from here. Clock is zero, right? Now, it will go. Because I put something like hash, clock period divided by two. It will go from zero and then for 10 nanoseconds. Then it flips the clock. Because I said clock is equal to not for the clock. It will flip it to one, right? Then it goes for 10 and it goes for 10 nanoseconds again. Then flip the clock again to zero. It goes to 10 nanoseconds, flip again to one, to zero, one. So it will do this forever because I use something like this. Forever. So this code will go on to infinity. So if you remember, block falls for me. Just like this. One zero one zero one zero one zero one one day. Right? So that gets out to generate the block. Oh, no, no, no. They use what? No, no, no. The full clock is a whole period. So if I say I'm toggling the clock, clock right? I have to use because I toggle the clock every 10 and 2 seconds. 10 and 2 seconds. In case I'm saying I'm toggling the clock every 20, every 20 and 2 seconds, it's a different clock. It becomes a different clock. So it means that it has become something like this. Uh, from year to year, it's 14 nanoseconds. I've done it for 10 And then it is a completely different clock. So we understand. So this, is the, this is the only new thing for today the clock generation. So I've seen how to generate the clock. The clock falls like this. So, right? So the next is I just give it my inputs. Right? So first of all, I start with, as I said, you always start with your reset to zero. So at this point, it will reset my entire system for me, right? Then, I wait for some time, I wait for, let's say, 100 nanoseconds, then I give my reset one. So from that point on, I can give it any input I want. Right? So first of all, I'm giving it one zero. My pipe is, my pipe is one, my ten is zero. Then I wait for 15, what? Then I set everything, everything to zero again. You see that here? For my simulation, uh, and I have to be very careful. I, uh, once, I, once I input some graph, press it again. If not, if the clock, if it delays, if my, if my input delays for, because I'm using the clock, I'm using opposite edges of the clock, for the clock. If my, if my, if my, if my input delays for, uh, let's say, two clock cycles, it means that it, it will pick up, let's say, five and five. If I, if I input a five here, right, and I leave it on like this, at every pointing edge of the clock, it will pick a five. Pick a five, pick a five, pick a five. Pick a five. Yeah. So anytime I, I just input a five, I'll have to bring it down. It's what I like to see. That's why. I'm really here. I, I, I input one zero. Yes, I go to zero zero. I input zero one. Means that there's a test. I go to zero zero. I input let's say zero one. Then I go to zero zero. Right? Right? Okay. 
So here, what this means is that uh, somebody inputs, uh, we start from a zero, the person inputs a five, right? Then the person inputs um, a 15, right? Then the person inputs a what? A 10 or something. Understood? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Should I continue? Yes, sir. Okay, so now we can run the simulation and see. So run, run the simulation and let me see. Run it. It's working. So does it look like this? Does it look like this? If your simulation doesn't look like this, it means that there's something wrong somewhere. What? Yeah, you can change the run decks or something like that. Double uh, right click, and then you will see the run Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so let's continue. So, so you all have something like this, right? Now, you have to study the outputs. Study, study the outputs of the Because we are using. Please sit down, sit down. Because we are using um, the main state machine, right? The, the output. The, the output also depends on the input, right? So, when we get to a point like this, right? The output will be one point, right? At this point, this is actually a glitch. Right? The output should come around here uh, after this. Uh, one one is what? Right. One one is what? Right. We are in state, what? Right. Fifteen. Right? So, this is fifteen state. If somebody now takes a one, that's why right. the output is one one. But we came here, then it went down, then it came So, this is actually a glitch. That's why we, that's why we talked about the um, glitches, right? So, you that if the, if this was at if this was an um, if this was an actual vending machine, it would give you one penny, then change, and then we didn't start that you other change. See? So 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 you see how glitches can not sometimes glitches are not actually designed. So if somebody designs something like this, you that you give you candy the change like twice. <laughs> so you can fix this glitch by actually uh, what you, by actually making your output register. You call it register. We can solve this glitch by making your output register. We we say so now we have to define two outputs again. So let's say we have the change. Okay, we have the over here. Can you change, right? Then we need we need the other output. Which is uh, this is can you out and then change out. And then we say that always are the two things that you talk about. That's when we give the can you change. We have can you out and then change out. Understood. So now we are so now we are we are giving our we are actually making our output depend on the clock. So at the positive edge of the clock, we give the candy and change that we have we have already we have we have we have done already to another candy and change, and then that becomes our output. In this way, we are, in this way we are able to solve the the glitch. Yeah, we are actually really it. So that 
<laughs> so that there will be no glitch. So once you do that, and then we run, and then we run oscillation. You see that here, there's no glitch anymore. The output will come around here. So, 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 we can study more about that one if you want. It's your choice. Now, okay, so now for your lab report, just you do, just a small, just uh, change the test benches to, to, to this. That's the point to be 5, 5, 5, 5, and then, and then uh, take the, take your weight. So then take your waveform, then put it into a, a file. Probably keep it files. And submit to me. Okay. Yeah. So for that assignment, all you are doing is that you are changing the test bench. For my test bench, I think I use 5, 10, and 10 or something like that. So in your test bench, just change. Use 5. Five, five, five. So that is with your face. Then you, you, then you actually capture your test bench. Then wait for then, then explain it more, right? Then you take another input. Uh, five, ten, five, five, ten, like five, ten, five, five, ten, 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 five, ten. Then you just capture everything together and. Do it to me as an assignment by probably next students or something. And then your okay, let me say this before you continue. Your it should look like this. Your report should look like this. Let me see if I have. Your report should just be like this. Uh, you, the topic, your name will come. Your index number will set morning or evening. Morning or evening. Then the the time. The lab. This is very important. People don't realize they should be losing mass. I want I want you to to close some order, right? So here, yeah, lab number. So lab and then the number. Lab one, lab two, and then the title of the lab will come, right? And then for the first page, you bring your block diagram. Yeah, topic your block diagram, then your input output, and then you capture your code. I, I said, right, the test benches, right? So you capture your test benches, explain it a bit, like in some way you just explain something small here. Right, so you capture your test bench, and then you explain your test bench a bit. Right? And then you capture your simulation and explain your simulation, and then you are done. That's just all. So here, this is here and a half. Masa, I said this is very important. The template must look like this. If it doesn't look like this, too much. I said for the first page, you put okay. And I'll make this template available to you then you just study. But don't use this one. Your own one, but you just follow this format. For why? For why? I will have it. So I'll make a template available soon. And then you should uh, give me the lab one. Use this template to give me we have lab one already. So give me the lab one. <laughs> The lab one. Not, not. What? Okay, yeah, so we have lab one. Then this is lab two. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, you have lab one. You have lab two. And then this is lab three. Huh? No, no, just do. 
One power, one power. Of please, this is very, this is very important. Do one power for lap one, lap two, lap three. You know what lap one is already, right? You know what lap two is. You know what lap two is. No. So only that one. Yeah, and then that one. I think at the end of the slide, I give you something. Like, I give you something there. That is, if you go to the slide, if, if you don't go to the slide, you know. Let me see. But, huh? please, please keep quiet. But, I forgot to matter. <laughs> so, all the laps must be in this thing, in this format, right? So, we have the lab one. I think lab two was last week. I gave, I gave to you last week. Huh? Lab two, lab one, two, three. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know what the lab two is? I don't. Uh... The lab two. I'm showing the lab two. Okay, here's the lab two. It's in the slide for the lab two already. So if you're not seeing it, it means that you're not going to it. So submit lab one, lab two, lab three. So so it's been other. You guys have designed, you guys, this is quite, quite. You guys have designed public talent for it. Top model, first call, two, public talent. And then you are done. So, you, so, you, so, you, please keep quiet. If you don't do it the way I want, you are losing marks. That's why I'm going to explain to you. You have to follow all this one, uh, submit the DPT, synthesis results, all of that, inside the DPT. And that's not how I do it. So, all of you, because I made one. Nah, not good. The whole class is a bit just one. And I'll just give you the max way. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I said, if you want, no class has a good one. Let's your choice. I don't care. Whatever yeah, it is, so I'm making people different ways. So, okay, okay, okay. So, well, yeah, yeah, just watch it. And then I divide the max class, uh, divided by the whole class. The max divided by the whole class, do you want? Okay, so please, please, please sit down. Let me just finish and go. So the next is our our board test. <laughs> so the next is the next is our board test, right? The board. So we are, we are so we are going to test your design right now. So we are. <laughs> so we are testing. So now, what I did was that uh, I'm using. I'm using seven seconds to play. This is quite a I'm using seven seconds to play to display my states. And then my state just means the money entered, right? Then 0, 5, 10, 15. To be displayed here. And, and then that will show the money that was entered, or the or the print that was entered. So if it's in case I enter 10, it will show a 10. Once I enter 5, it will show 15. In case I write, it will show 15. Then if I enter that, the other thing will show change by right. So, and then I use this tool 
Push buttons here. Yeah. Uh, for the, my five and ten. Once I click one, it's five. One, one of them is five. This push button is five, right? Once I push it once, then that I enter the five. Then I can push again. Then I have a ten push button here, right? Are you seeing it? Yes. Then I use this one for my reset. You saw that I have a kind of reset signal. So I use this one. If somebody presses this, it resets the entire system of whatever. Then my change, my candy LED will be here. So if there is candy, it will bright up there. It will light up this LED. If there is change, it will light up this LED. Understood? That's how I'm going to test my system. Right? So, <laughs> so to test the system right now, what I have right now is only one thing. What I have is my family FSS. It's the only model I have right now. And then what I'm actually testing. Right? So now I have to add for the push button or for every model, right? I need to actually have a, a controller. So for every model within the board, I have to design the controller to control that model, right? So if I take uh, the service segment to the screen, right? You, you know how it works. You know how the service segment display works. I have to write some code that will control the service segment display. So it will take the money display. So that will be the state, the zero one uh, from my tech machine. Then it will report it. Right? And then it will give it to this little mini screen. Here. Yeah. The controller that will actually control this little mini display here. Now, for the push button, there, there, there is always an issue here. So I have to pass my push button through what is called the bounce settings. Before it works, you will see what it is already. And then I connect my candy LED to the LED, and then my chip LED to another LED. So that is how. Right, so we, so we start with the push button. Now, so you see that for the push button here, I have to, I have to connect this one. To, I have to connect this one to the same before the before the camera for the push button. And then why? So why do we connect it to the debounce circuit? Please, this again. This is very important. Now, if we take if we take any board like this, right? And then you have a push button on it, right? Because uh, you are dealing in the you are dealing with ones and zeros, digital kind of world within the board. But if the push button is kind of analog, right? The push button is an is an analog is an analog kind of push button. So once you push it once, what what what, what I push it once? I want get what I want. Once I push it once, right? I want a signal for just one pause. Right? If I have a clock like this. And then I push this to my clock, and then I have my push button. My push button. If I push the push button once, I want maybe from, uh, from the positive edge here, it will just capture it once. Right? <laughs> This is what I want. If it goes beyond once, I'll have an issue. Right? But in the real world, for this real push button, once I push it, because it is um, a system, because it is an analog system, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, then it becomes stable. And then once I move around, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, then it settles. Right? So once I push the push button here, just once, it takes some time. You push up down one so, so, so many times. Then it settles to one. Once I remove my hand, it goes one to one to one to one to one. Then it settles to zero. That's how the speed button works in real life. But I just want one pulse. Just one pulse. So how do I do that? So that's why we have to pass this the signal, this signal to what is called the rebound circuit. A very, very simple circuit. That will actually give it only one pulse. Understood? You see how interesting it is? The bounce. So here, it just means that the signal is bouncing. 
Because you see, it takes me so many times. It is not easy. Once I remove my hand, it takes me so many times before it does it. But I guess once, when you go on pause, when you go on pause. Understood? Very easy. Very, very interesting, right? Very, very interesting, right? We have to understand the concept. So, so how do I design my debug statements? It's just two flip flops and then and then at the better than an arm gate. Right? That's just how I design my debug So what are they? These two flip flops. You can go to the city, but I don't have time to explain everything. But all that is about two two flip flops, right? And then, and then at the end of the day, the switch up, I give my rebound or I give my my signal here, the bouncer one, the one I press, the switch thing. Right? It will be sampled by this flip flop. Sampled by this flip flop. Give it to this one here, and I get my switch out. So at the end of the day, this is how my switch out looks So you see that it gives only one force. Yeah. Do you understand? Okay. So. <laughs> I, 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 and I hope you understand. This is how the, the bounce ticket just works. It, it just gives you one fault. So, so I hope, I hope, and I hope you guys have designed it already. So we'll just move on quick. Okay. So this is the push button code that you guys have entered already. So there's no. Shall we continue? Oh, So I modified my my code a bit to, to include my money display, the, the money display, right? So once you have your free time, just go through it. So I'm, I'm just keep skipping like that. But it means that I've done it, so maybe in the next time it will come. <laughs> so next is... Please, please, please keep quiet. So, briefly, briefly, briefly. Now, this is the second. This is keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. This is the seven segment. Hey, I've, I've never met a group, a group of people that don't like to learn like that. Hey. <laughs> 
very very interesting the interesting thing about the, the display here is that so now if i have one this is good if i have one let uh -huh, so the board this board uses common anode so a one tenth it off zero tenths it one right so let's take it now if i have just one display one seven seven display just like this this a b c d e f g right a b c d e f g what happens is that all the anodes all the anodes are connected to a p i want to so let's say a n it's a p that all the anodes all the anodes are connected to it but and, and, and also it because it will take it to be a bear. So and then all the this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G are connected to another pin. So if I want to say in case I want to uh, display an eight, I give here zero 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 and then it will turn on on this 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 this, this and turn everything on. Right, that is just for one display. This is very, very interesting stuff here. <laughs> so, understand here. Now, if I have two, listen here. If, in case I have two displays, let's say just one display, I have another display here. Right, there are two. One display, another display. So, this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right, what happens is that I connect the anodes here again to so this anode one and then here is anode two. I connect all the anodes to a voltage source, right? To anode two. Now there are two ways. There are, there are two ways to do this. I can connect all these wires here, and then again come and connect another wire. All the wires here, one, two, three, six, seven. So A, B, C, D. E, so I connect all of this again. So so now, if, in case I want to, to display, let's say, if I want to display, let's say, zero here. If I want to display zero here and display, let's say, eight here, I have to turn on. I have to turn on. So I just give it the volume here. So eight here will be what? Zero, 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 right? One here will be what? One. If I want to display one here. So I give here zero zero zero, then give here zero zero one, and then it means that I've connected uh, zero here and then one here. Whatever, 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 whatever. That is one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. You understand? You understand? You understand? So I'm just trying to make a point here. Please keep quiet and let me finish first and go. I'm just trying to make a point here. So now here, because we have used, because we have used wiring here, this makes your circuit so large, right? Because you're using so many wires. Please keep quiet. Keep quiet. What happens here is that we connect. We don't use two. We don't use two here. Uh, two of the uh, of the of the wires here. We use only one wire. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we connect this A here. Just just this one here. Just this A. It's connected to both this and this. And this and here, the B here is connected to here and here at the same time, right? So now the trick here is: so how do I display one here and zero here at the same time? That's where the taking comes in, right? So now that's where you can use your eyes because you can actually deceive your eyes that because here, in effect, you can display two numbers at the same time. It's impossible, right? So you have to deceive your eyes to think that it is displaying two numbers. But it's, in actual fact, it displays one number, then displays another number. But they are also here at the same time. So your eyes is deceived into thinking that you are displaying the same number, right? Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me finish this thing. So now it's like, if you take, if, it's like, if you take a video, right? 
The bicycle will be like this, right? Then you connect some light LED here, right? If it is stable, what happens? You see that you see only one light on this line. Now, if it starts rotating, rotating so fast that your eyes is deceived into thinking that everything is connected to the light, right? But in other part, you connect only one thing to the light. That's the idea you lose here. So, how do you achieve that? Right? Interesting, right? <laughs> so, how do we achieve that? So now here, you, you, uh, you guys know how to create um, a, a, a counter. A counter in C, or whatever the link is. A counter that counts up. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Very easy to create, right? So let's say here, we have two of them, right? We have two. We have two here, right? So what I, what I can do simply is that uh, I can turn this one on, right? And give it. Please keep quiet. So, so this is what it, this is what it is done. You turn this one on, right? Give it a value, right? Turn this one off. Turn this one on. And give it another value. Then do it in such a way that it will it, like it will do it again, like it will come back again. In a new form. Right? So what you do is that you create a counter. A counter. Let's say so here, because we have to just one base counter. Right? I create a counter. And all I do is that I count up. So counter is equal to counter plus one, right? So here it counts. This is zero, one, two, three, four, going. But understand, it's just one bit. It just counter is just one bit. So if it counts, if if it starts with zero, right? The counter will be zero, one bit, right? If it counts to zero, then one. So it means that it has gone to one. The counter will be one here, right? Now, if you count to two, what happens? Two is what? Two bits. Two is what? One zero. Because we use only one bit as a counter. If it's only this, only one bit. So here will be what? Zero. If it goes to three, what happens? Three is what? One one. This part, three is zero. <laughs> Two point five. So three. So three is what? One one. So because you're using only one bit, it only fits the LSB. So here it comes one. Four is what? One zero zero. Four bits. It fits only this. This goes to zero. So it means that once you design a one bit counter, and then you are just counting up. And because it's taking only the LSB, you have zero one zero one zero one. Understood? Huh? What? <laughs> so, you need that. The counter comes one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Forever. Now, now I come and write my let's say your switch statements in C. You guys already know C. So and then in parallel, I just come and write my case statements. So I come and write them like case counter. Right? Listen carefully. I write case counter. Right? You do it. And then we start from uh, zero. If the counter is zero, what happens? This thing, A N, is equal to one, right? A zero is equal to zero, right? I give A is equal to. Let's say I don't want to display zero here. I give A is equal to the number. A, so A will be zero, right? Zero. I want to display zero. So here is zero zero. Zero, 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 Probably one, right? 
So this is just one statement. So what happens is that anytime the counter goes to zero, it will display, it will on this one, it will off this one, then it will give it this number. And then another case, case one. Right? I say A, A1 is what? Zero. A0 is what? One. So, okay, okay. I use. I use what one here. I use zero here. So a zero is uh, what? A one is zero. A zero is one. Then I give it a is equal to maybe I want to I want to display one here. I give it one over zero zero one 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 one. Right. Then I give it. I do it at the positive edge of the clock. So at the positive edge of the clock, it will do this statement. And then, so this is at the positive edge of the clock. It will be a one over zero. And then one number will be displayed. At the next positive edge, it will give one over zero. Another number will be displayed. Understood? So, so that's just how the display works. You can go through the code.